So, Phil Kogan, I mean, you're the host and one of the executive producers of The Amazing Race, which has had this amazing streak at the Emmys, winning 10 of the Best Reality Competition Series awards. You've spent the last couple of years going back and forth with The Voice, and now it's, I think it's your turn again. Um, so just reflect on that, what, what that first that streak of seven meant, and then coming back and beating Top Chef and, you know, reclaiming the crown and now going back and forth with the voice. What, what's, the, what's your Emmy experience been for you? Well, the, the fact that we are still a relevant show after the period that we've been on is hugely satisfying because we really do strive each year or each season to make the show as fresh and as original as we can. Um, so, you know, Clearly, there's some very good shows out there, and we just love that we are relevant still, that we are making a show that people want to watch and that people acknowledge as being uh, a worthy show, worthy of being nominated for, for an Emmy. And I, and I think what, you, as you, you touched upon, is that, I mean, every season and certainly every, because they sort of get presented in fall and spring for the most part, there's always a little change somewhere. And I guess in recent seasons, we're seeing more of you on camera and at those pit stops and really getting that sense that, you know, you're kind of racing to those pit stops too, right? Talk about that. Like how close has it been for you? Are you sometimes on the same flight with the team? Yeah, and it's it hasn't changed. You know, the, the, the fact is that way back in the beginning, we shot – the very first season, it was 13 shows in 30 days. Now we shoot 12 shows in 21 days. So, uh, for instance, this new season coming up, I ended up missing my flight at, at the end of episode one because teams were late coming to the pit stop. So it, that had a domino effect on my ability to shoot going into episode two and then being ahead of the teams to get there at the mat before they arrive. And as you said, um, now I've been doing a lot of these live updates, which which the audience really loves, where I'm actually telling the audience who's running in first to take up a particular challenge. And obviously I only get one shot at that because it's shot as live. And I think the audience loves that. Now, I have always been there when they've been there for the years that we've been making the show. It's just – Starting back in season 25, I decided that I would would kind of almost do like a sideline update rather than shooting just ahead of the teams and then getting to the pit stop just ahead of the teams. But it's always been a race. It's just I think we've allowed the audience a little bit more behind the scenes, if you like, to see or to understand. Maybe they've just got more of an understanding of just how tight the timing is for all of us making the show. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and uh, like, uh, the show, which I, I've been a fan of since uh, season one, um, what I think this sort of goes unsung is the incredible crew behind the scenes. I mean, so every single team has a camera operator. Is there a sound person as well, or is it a one person following each team, or are there two? How does, how does that work? So there's a cameraman and a sound man, and these uh, teams are real storytellers in their own right. They're very experienced cinematographers and, and sound operators who are multitaskers, so they're, they're not only shooting the material that's needed and dancing with each other to stay out of each other's shots, so it's carefully, you know, they're, 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 it's almost like a dance, if you like, when they when they all swarm into a detour and there's multiple teams there, they all have to know how to just give each other a little bit of a glance to know how to stay out of each other's way, get coverage, know who's covering stuff wide. And, of course, they're focused on their individual teams, but they're also overlapping material that the editors can then use to put together. And when they're with the teams, as long as they are, they can't just be shooting willy-nilly. They've got to be zeroing in on what is becoming a story with a particular team to know some questions to prompt them in terms of asking them what's happening where you know where how 
how you're feeling right now. Um, what do you feel about this other team? Or to be ready to get up and shoot them in a conversation at an airport because they pull another team aside and suddenly there's a scene going on at an airport. So they're they're extremely experienced, all of them. They're very alert and they understand how to follow a story. So they're they're wearing many different hats. Now the the sound operator is obviously helping the camera operator in a number of ways, making sure that the uh, media that we're recording on is available to them for a quick change of the media, keeping uh, battery changes available at a moment's notice. Anytime a team talks to somebody, say, randomly at an airport or randomly out on the street, that person has to give their permissions to to be on camera. So this sound recorder has got to whip out a a release and say, would you mind signing this release? We're making this show, and are you happy with being on camera? Um, so there's a lot going on, and, and these guys operate independently like their own little team, their own little production team that, of course, come together at points, but sometimes they're separated because a team might get lost, and that crew is, is with, that, with that team for hours on end, and they're texting all of us updates on what's going on while they're sitting in a long car ride the cameraman ah. might text us and and give us updates now one of the things that the audience really finds interesting is when i talk to them about it is that the audience has seen more of what's happened than i have and and many of the people in production when yep. they come to the mat and the audience have to, they have to sort of, when they register that, they really get it, which is everything that's being documented or gets documented during the show and that we show as part of the episode to the audience, they have seen more than I have seen at the time that I meet those teens coming to the map. Right, right. So sometimes something will happen and... There's a lot of text that I'm having to follow and that all of us who are following story are trying to keep up with. We we have a collective group of, of information being fired around to all facets of production so we know who's lost, where are they lost, what's happened, what are they saying, what's going down. Now, all of that story information, which is happening in a particular episode over, say, a period of 36 hours only, um, all of that information has to be digested by all of us and we've got to keep up with what's going on. And when it's the beginning of the season, we've got 11 of these story threads, if you like, where different groups that are firing, the, you're delivering these stories to us. I have to take all of this information in so that when they get to the mat, I'm able to I, – I, it's as if I know. The audience, the audience expects that I know what happened four hours ago on a lonely road in the back – blocks of Botswana. That's right. That's now, right. As, 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 as a viewer, right, I can contest to that. It's like, yeah, you, because we want you, to, you're our voice, and we want you right. to be asking those questions that we, what we were yelling at the TV, we want to hear you ask. Yeah. Right, and, and, and now if you factor in that maybe the cameraman who's trying to send us a story update can't get a, a, a signal because right. we're so remote, that he can't actually get that information out. That may that 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 means that it's harder for us to then know exactly what's going on. Or um, there's a, there's some other reason that we you know maybe there's so much going on that the cameraman can't stop and start texting us updates because he's in the thick of telling the story and he can't pull the camera off his right. shoulder or the sound guy can't because he's so engrossed in what's going on and so involved. And so that is all happening. Now, the viewer is seeing it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I know every single piece of what's happened there before they come to the mat. Now, there have been times where audiences will say to me, well, why didn't you, why didn't you say something to the Twinnies when they moved the money? Well, uh -huh. the simple answer to that is I didn't know. Right. Now, it's hard for the audience to understand that I wouldn't know that because – they just assume that I know everything they know because they've seen the show. So it does become incredibly challenging at times. And and so, you know, a frequent question I get is, 
even though I'm sometimes only arriving at the finish line 10 minutes before the first team runs in because I'm trying to just stay ahead of them and it's rushed and I've got to set up all my shots and and, and be there at the mat, um, a, a lot of times they, they'll they say, well, what are you doing? Well, what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep myself informed. I'm trying to, to be as up-to-date with what is happening as possible because otherwise – there's no point in me sort of having them come in and I don't know what's going I've got to know. And so there are times where a team will come in and I will start talking to them, interviewing them on the mat, and then I'll actually just hold them for a second and jump over and speak to the cameraman and the sound right. person and say, hey, what happened when they got to the thing? You know, like I need information. Or, or they'll stop me and they'll come and whisper in my ear while I'm in the middle of an interview and they'll whisper in my ear, uh, make sure you talk to him about um, why he took why they took the wrong turn, you know why they right. took the wrong turn right. when they were coming here. So uh, they every all of us are all of us are working uh, very hard to keep each other informed. And the good news is that it's become easier to keep up with story tracking story in 2016 than it was when we started in 2001 when there were less ways that you could communicate information in foreign countries. Um, right. Not that we don't still have our challenges because our phones, you know, run out of battery or we run out of uh, the digital plan gets so used up there's no more digital thing and we haven't got time to, like, get a signal to to load our phones back up with more information or, you know, our phones don't work with that particular phone in that country, it's there's so many logistical issues that you do not even that do not even factor into making a show if you make it in the valley or in Hollywood somewhere. You just don't think about these things. Well, when, and one factor I would think is, as you said, it, it's 15 years, 28 seasons have aired so far, and it, it's a big hit in America and in Canada, but. Around the world, I mean, this, this, whether there's, there's local editions now, but have you found over the years the the local, like the bystanders wanting to be more involved? Or I'm always surprised watching that more people don't lend a hand. That you know, because you there's always a, you, there's one or two people that'll offer to take a team here or to show them there. And uh, but is that does that sort of has that ever interfered with the the flow of the race? Too many people wanting no. to get. No, I mean we embrace fans wanting to interact with the show. It's a big part of of the success of of our show and also the fact that fans we embrace the fact that fans are sharing the fact that they've seen racers. Now what I do love is that the hardcore fans generally don't want to be spoilers. You know, they don't want to be right. the oh, I know what happened, you know, they don't want to ruin it for the real truth, the true fan, is is someone who will make it make an exciting tweet to sort of get yeah. other fans around the world excited without spoiling it. And those people who spoil it, I mean, there's always people that want to spoil. You know, I saw what happened, and I'm going to tell the world how important I am because I know what happened. But that very rarely happens with our fans. Our fans are very respectful of ensuring that everybody who's a fan of the race can enjoy the race and we embrace the technology that's available now where people are periscoping us or if you remember when we we started in season uh 28 where where we actually were live uh, around the world people were watching the start of the race live right. we embrace that new technology we love that new technology um in the beginning in the race it was very secretive about where we went what we were doing now we just embrace the fact that everybody does know where we are, can see where we are. It's part of marketing the show. It's part of keeping up with this changing world that we live in. We don't live in a linear world now where things are recorded in secret for months on end and then suddenly, you know, get shelved and posted and put away and then suddenly come up like they're as live as if they're happening. I mean, there was a time where the, the the approach was sort of like, oh, well, this is all happening now, and, you know, people thought we were out for 12 weeks shooting this show, and every week there was another installment. You know, 
people are way more media people are way more media savvy now to understand that that's not how it works. Everybody yeah, knows what people talk in 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 television vernacular like oh that was a good sound bite and uh uh oh what a great you know transition what a great shot what a great <laughs> so we live but in a different what, world but what is interesting having spoken to a, a lot of the contestants over the years that to a person that they say they for, that they forget the camera and sound people are there that they they get so used to seeing them and that they, they that they let the guard down that they there are those moments and that i think is, is extraordinary that that it they be, that they become such part of the fabric that we are seeing these the, these people and i i i would guess that over the years you've seen people that try a persona at some point it's sheer exhaustion that means they drop it right like you've probably seen yeah. contestants that want to present themselves one way but by the end of whatever their journey on the race is we're seeing the real them. Yeah, I mean, that's why, um, you know, a, a big factors in our show are things that are not big factors in, in, in other shows as far as what the teams have to put up with. Um, jet lag, sleep deprivation, changing diets, changing climates, uh, all of these influences have an impact on the personalities that we – have been tested. They're not in a 69, 70 degree studio with perfect lighting, having been properly hydrated before they run out to perform some performance, you know, to do some performance. They are jet lagged, sleep deprived, uh, possibly, uh, you know, suffering from, uh, from some stomach bug. Um, sure. Maybe not hydrated properly, and now we say to them, "There's a million dollars on the line, and you are going to make salt uh, <laughs> by going into the ocean and collecting seawater, and you're going to make salt." It's like our show is 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 an extreme <laughs> is an extreme uh, competition where people are doing things that they didn't even know existed. It's not like, oh, I know all the music cues. I know my routine down pat. I know this is my world. I dominate it. I'm a great singer or, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm great at one particular thing. I'm going to perform it. No, it's the antithesis of that. It's I wouldn't know the first thing about making salt, but i got to make a pound of it before I can get my next clue. Um, so, yes, people drop their guard because there's a reason that sleep, deprivation was used for torture uh these people are being pushed to their absolute limit physically and mentally and of course that's part of what makes the amazing race different from anything that's out there i think and i think emmy voters have responded like i said it's you guys have won 10 of the uh 13 times they've given out this award you're up you know you've been nominated every year um and and what Emmy voters do is, I mean, they they look at one episode of every nominee, and so talk about that. I mean, obviously, you guys got the secret sauce. You know how to pick an episode. Like how how does that conversation happen? As to which of you have your, you know, you have two seasons worth to choose from. How do you decide to pick the one you did say for this uh, Emmy year? Well, I think a big part of it is what we get, you know, the feedback that we get back from the audience and the one that really gets the biggest reaction. Um, this, this episode from Chamonix is, is absolutely breathtaking. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's unlike, I think any, any episode of amazing race that we've ever had. Uh, the, the Alps, look extraordinary Mont Blanc off in the background these teams mm -hmm. going up into the thin air of the mountains to perform these challenges you know going over these precarious drop offs and blowing up avalanches and then flying literally flying off the mountains above what might be the most spectacular mountain town in the world in Chamonix um the, the the photography, which got nominated for an Emmy, yeah, which yeah. was nominated for the Emmy, was is 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 absolutely extraordinary. 
Uh, I, I thought, agree. Yeah. I I thought the um, the editing in this particular episode was 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 just wonderful. The uh, every aspect of of the show I thought was was great. It it it, it, it certainly got my vote. You know, and um, and there seemed to be a general consensus. Well, you know. Look at this episode. I mean, it's breathtaking. Yeah, absolutely. And if, ever, yeah. It, and if ever there was a, if ever there was an episode for 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 audiences to enjoy on a big screen and in high definition, it was this episode. And uh, it's unlike anything you see on TV. And there there are these so, you know, these 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 teams running through what is almost which is essentially like a postcard. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, no, it's absolutely cinematic, and like I said, the cinematographers got nominated, the editing did, uh, it's it submitted. Um, well, I, I think, like I had mentioned at the outset, that, you know, you guys, the last couple of years have been back and forth with The Voice, that, um, I don't know, I think that uh, this year, you know, it's, it's it's The Amazing Race's time, it's turn, you know, you you let The Voice have it last year, so I think that, uh, yeah, and it's just, you know, you got to 10, it would be nice, now the now starting the double digits, yeah. Um, it, it, oh, wow, look uh, at you. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, well, I mean, well, listen, I mean, I know it's, it's, I think, as you said, to be invited to the party is such a, uh, the acknowledging what's gone on to put the show on the air. And, and, and I think it's so illustrative that you're saying that this is done in 21 days. Like, it's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, I, as a fan, I wonder, um, you know, you've sort of circled the globe many, many times. Is there one country that you're sort of rooting for to go to that you haven't been? Is there anyone left that you haven't been to that there's? Well, I have a lot of favorites, you know, personal favorites, places that I have on on my list, um, and that those are just for purely for selfish reasons. <laughs> so if you're asking me that, I can answer it. I mean, uh, I know, you know, B- Bertram, our executive producer, has, has done a great job, I think, at picking countries that have really created great content. But I would uh, I would love to get to Bhutan. Uh, I would love to get to Nepal. Uh, Antarctica, I think, would be great, but there's a very short window of time to get there. Um, right. it, for me, it's about being in new places. And you know, prior to Amazing Race, I had been to 60 countries, so I was really lucky. I've been lucky in my career, even before Amazing Race, to have traveled to many countries to shoot. And now I think we're up. For, for my list is up over 100 and something. Um, wow. Anytime we get to a new place is good with me. I think we have there's 170 something registered nations with the UN. And obviously, there's some places in the world that uh, I, I don't really care to go to right now. I'm not in a major rush to get to to Pakistan or or okay. Afghanistan right now. Um, I, I, and I know that Afghanistan is an abs- and so is Pakistan an absolute. They're, they're stunning countries. It's just that they're probably not the most stable places for us to travel to. Well, let's hope. Um, I mean, let's hope the race stays on long enough and things quiet down there because I think you have been in and out of countries that have unfortunately been in the news for the wrong kinds of reasons. And yeah. Let's, let's hope, yeah, let's hope that the race is around long enough that you can get to uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and then, as you said, to... Yeah, Pakistan. and I think that's been one of the one of the most rewarding and satisfying things for all of us who work on the show is that we have been able to share the world in a positive light. We've been able to say to people, you know... You can travel to so many places around the world safely and where people will embrace you. And we show the world, you know, as I said at the beginning of the show, the world is waiting for you. I'm, what I'm, th- where that comes from is just the idea that there is so much out there in the world for people to see. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. when we do see the world, it, uh, it, a lot of times it, it tends to be making headline news. Some country is making headline news because something is going wrong. And we are we are making headlines and showing off places around the world, uh, not because something's going wrong, but actually because something is really going right and something is really yeah. wonderful out there that 
we have the honor and the privilege of sharing with an audience. And I think we have, over the period of time that we've been on, enlightened a lot of people about Absolutely. what the world is really like as opposed to what they think it is like or or as opposed to what, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. News producers tend to want people to think the world is like because it right. makes for a better, more impactful news story. So um, America is a very safe country, but it's not the safest country in the world. Um, it's not even in the top ten. But I still see America as safe. But it just says to people, hey, uh, and I love living here, and it's part of one of the reasons that you know I moved here is I just love so much about this country. But I also love that we that that there's an opportunity for people to travel and to share in different cultures. And yeah. if this if if there's one thing that this show has done, I think is just opened people's eyes, opened up their minds to new opportunities and Absolutely. to maybe you know and there's nothing more satisfying than when I get a note from somebody I just got a on my Twitter feed a guy standing right where we set up the mat uh, uh I think it was in season 7 in South America and uh you know he sends a photograph and he goes hey Phil guess where I am and it, you know, I don't know whether he would have traveled there if it hadn't been for the amazing race but when I know that people have been motivated to go places that we've been to because of the amazing race, that's hugely satisfying. Yeah. I mean, how many shows have that ability to not only entertain but to extend the the influence of the show into people's lives where they actually want to go emulate what our teams are doing and to to proudly say, hey, I'm standing where or I've visited the same place that Amazing Race went to. Yeah, I know. It's extraordinary. Well, listen, thank you for taking the time. Uh, between races to talk, uh, and best of luck at the Emmys. Very kind. Uh, between races to talk, uh, and best of luck at the Emmys. Very kind. Uh, between races to 